So a few of you guys have been asking about the pod, which is a Sky Shed pod. It's a Canadian design. Uh, I do have a time lapse video of this being produced. I'll pop that in here. And uh, it was it was actually really easy to put together, and I had a friend of mine um, help. A friend of mine, Bob, astronomer Bob, he helped me with the uh, construction. And I have had some issues, but I got mine second hand, so um, a lot of it, the issues are probably because it is second hand. But it's pretty reasonably priced, so I picked it up second hand for about two grand. Uh, there are a fair bit more uh, brand new, but it's probably worth getting it brand new. Uh, I'll explain some of the issues later, but for now, I'll, uh, I'll show you my pod. So I keep the pod under a uh, tarp because, for two reasons really, most of the time it's really really hot in Australia. So it takes the temperature by down, I don't know, about 5 or 7 degrees at least, just having uh, the tarp reflecting that sunlight away. Uh, but also we get torrential rain here. So as, I mean it, it's a little bit waterproof, but it's not 100% watertight especially when there's sidewards torrential rain coming down. Basically where the seams of the clamshell join up together, you'll get uh, little uh, exploitable holes that the rain can come through. So the door is lockable, um, which is great. And the, the top there are bolts that you can screw in, so people can't open the, the pod. Now you'll also notice here, I've got a air conditioning unit. Uh, it's just a portable air conditioner. Uh, especially if you're in Australia, you're going to need one of these. This thing is like a big chicken cooker. Uh, it's like a big greenhouse, essentially, uh, and it is quite hot in here. So if you're storing gear, you need to make sure that you are temperature controlling it. Uh, now, I had to cut a hole about here, and the exhaust air comes out there. And check this out. Hey Siri, turn the observatory air conditioner off. How cool is that? Hey Siri, turn the observatory air conditioner back on. Done. <laughs> it gives me some cool data about consumption and how much energy I've used and how much it's going to use for the year and that sort of thing. So here we are in the pod and really to open once you've undone the bolts. Pretty light and straightforward, really. So the Sky Shed pod comes with these uh, extra pod type bits off the side where you can store shelves and equipment and extra stuff. So they're, they're really handy to have. Some people have uh, two or three of them. Uh, I only need one really just for the computer. Uh, one thing to avoid though is I have smashed this computer before swinging the pod bay doors around. Uh, so you want to be careful of that. The pod roof itself has these rollers. It's all built on these rollers. They're pretty much just like skateboard bearings. And uh, they look like roller blade re wheels, really. Uh, and you just push the whole thing around. So none of it's automated or anything like this. This is the base metal model Skypod. They do have the Skypod Max now, which is, of course, big and massive and automated. And, fixes all of the issues you might have with the Sky Shed Pod. Um, but for a starter dome, this is pretty good. Now, one issue with the Sky Shed Pod is that when you have a target that's straight up, so straight up at the zenith, uh, if you look at the pod roof here, your half, if, you're, if you're looking straight up, half of your telescope is inside this in this lip of the roof, uh, and that can be a real problem. It can be really annoying because once 
something gets up to a certain height, it's uh, sort of up there in the sky and it just goes a little bit higher and then suddenly it's in a perfect position to, to photograph because it's so up and clear and, and straight up but you just can't see it because of that look of the roof. Uh, so that's really annoying and they do have a product to uh, alleviate that where you pull the whole roof off and push it away and that, uh, that helps with it. Um, but there's just not enough space here in, in my installation. I'm going to hit the hit the fence there if I do something like that. Another little trick with the heating and cooling, well, cooling for the most part, is uh, you can cut into the HDPE plastic and pour in um, some beanbag balls uh, that will create more insulation in the lining. So a lot of this has been filled with uh, with beanbag filler, which will then drag the temperature down. I don't know, another five degrees, so everything helps. This is what I mean about this being watertight, even though it's, uh, it's for the most part it's watertight. You do have these gaps uh, where the shells meet, and I've siliconed all of those up, and I've put rubber, and there's lots of foam uh, sealing and insulation they give you, but uh, if you're in torrential conditions, which can happen now and then, I usually add some bricks here and add some more rubber here, some matting, put the tarp over, and that, uh, that helps protect everything. So that's the tour of the Skyshed pod. All in all, it's a really great product. I've uh, only got a few small complaints, particularly the Zenith and the, the water stuff, but they're things you can work around. Realistically speaking, once you've spent a certain amount of money on your telescope, you don't want it sitting in the closet. <laughs> it's not worthwhile to have such a passion be stimmied by the fact that your stuff has to be set up each night. It really becomes tiresome. So if you're really keen to get the most out of your equipment, it does come a point where you do want some sort of observatory. And our roll-off roof observatory uh, is also another solution, and that's a really good one, and one I would have gone for if I didn't have the small footprint in, in my yard that I do. Because with the roll-off roof, you need somewhere for the roof to roll off. Uh, the beauty of the Skyshed pod, it, it has very uh, discreet footprint. So wherever you stick it, that's exactly how much room it's gonna take up. So it's been really good, and I have to say my productivity astronomically has improved uh, because when I come out at night I just flick the switch, I tell it to use its last alignment apart from a bit of uh, focusing and waiting for the camera's temperature to, to reach its minus 15 or minus 30 or whatever I'm using that night, uh, I'm good to go. Uh, it also means that if the weather is iffy, if I don't know if it's going to rain, uh, it doesn't matter because I can open it up if it's cloudy, I can sort of see how it's going and then stop. If it starts to rain, I can just quickly close the close the roof and get inside. Um, but some nights it's forecast for rain, and then I'll I'll be out noticing it's clear. So I'm, I'll just open up anyway and take the chances and see how see how I go. So that definitely speeds things up. Well, that's about it. I will try and give you guys a review of the Celestron Rasa, the 11 inch Rasa. It's an amazing telescope and I want to talk more about it in depth, so I'll do a proper video for that when I get some time. But I had a question about the, the pod and people ask me about the Skyshed pod all the time, so I thought I'd jot some thoughts down for you. I'll see you next time. Bye!